Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. And as always, we come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, we're up uh, 13 points on the S&P cash. Um, I haven't felt pretty much since Friday that I've had an edge on this market for more than an hour or two. Uh, and us just kind of bouncing around in this area. Uh, again, I wasn't looking for a lot of downside, but again, not much in the way of upside. I didn't see enough downside to get involved. Uh, I do continue to think we are setting up for a fairly large uh, move, and that move, uh, well, probably comes, at least the prelude comes on Monday after we see what happens uh, with the uh, trade talks over in Japan at the G20 meeting. Uh, and then, of course, what happens next? Uh, well, we're into fund buying. And boy, is it hit square on Monday uh, when we go into July. So uh, I think we're just, this is the, the part where we're, if you listen to like Wyckoff and the rest of those, this is where you were building steam uh, or building cause uh, to get something going next week. And I think that's what we have right now. Uh, and again, it's probably going to be headline driven, uh, charts be damned. So I'm not going to uh, be adding a lot of positions going into Friday's close. I wouldn't be surprised to see the VIX kind of spike uh, tomorrow at, uh, as we get into it, because of course, people are probably going to start buying uh, puts and calls. And both of those uh, premiums are probably going to severely be lower on Monday. Uh, because my guess is this is probably overblown too. A lot of this is probably in the news. Uh, but, uh, you know, could everything kind of explode on Monday? Could. I'm sitting on some fairly large uh, wins in the uh, Tech Insider for short-term stuff uh, for the daily newsletter. Like I said, uh, in the newsletter this morning, Mr. Miyagi, what could you learn from him in trading? Best way to avoid fight, not be there. And uh, I don't know, it just seems to me uh, like uh, putting money to work today, if you haven't already, you know, weeks ago, is more like gambling than it is prudent speculation. Uh, and uh, I always go back to that part in Jesse Livermore's book where he said that uh, when he really started making the big money was when he figured out the difference between gambling and speculation. Speculation involves both uh, foresight and using your intelligence. Most people use neither, but I think that was somebody else that said that. Uh, and uh, looking forward. So, uh, you know, there's uh, kind of an old saying in the stock market too, that uh, as retail investors, you have an advantage that somebody in the market does not have that has to work on Wall Street. And that that is, they always have to be acting like they were making money. Uh, you know, th this isn't a business where they call strikes and balls. You can wait for your pitch as long as you want. And uh, generally you're better off to be well rested when the signal comes than be worn out waiting for it. And uh, as uh, Larry Pezzavento says in the morning, you'd rather be out of the market wishing you were in than in the market wishing you were out. So that's it. It just seems like a, kind of a tough week to go after money if you haven't already got a position in here. And as I said, you know, I've got, you know, 10 to 25% uh, or so uh, profits on a couple of stocks. Uh, some of the other ones are doing fairly well, maybe 10 or 15%. So uh, if something really horrible happens on Monday, maybe I have to give up those gains. Uh, if something good happens, then I get to continue on with them. And again, those are longer term positions anyway. I can't sell and buy them every day uh, or it would just be a trading newsletter, wouldn't it? So uh, can we sit on those? Yes. Will we lose money on them? Probably no, if everything turns to, uh, oh, oh. 
That's a little Spanish lingo for you come Monday. Uh, but uh, other than that, just not much happening. Now, um, we do have a little bit of bearish uh, sh foreshadowing in the market. And that came with the summation indexes for the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ to kind of turn down just a little, not much. This isn't horribly bearish. We also had uh, one of the lowest put call ratios in the VIX yesterday, which is generally also kind of bearish. So, you know, maybe the, those folks have already uh, hopped on board and there aren't a lot of people to buy downside protection uh, for Monday. But uh, I'm going to continue to watch that. Um, but generally, when people are not willing to buy protection, that's generally the most bearish point in the market. I was also talking to somebody else in the den yesterday, and uh, he asked me why I keep on saying every time earnings come out after the bell in the Tiger's Den that the end of the world has been postponed for yet another day. Uh, is because uh, generally highs are not made when everybody's bearish. They're generally made when everybody is euphoric. And we don't have a euphoric market here. Um, whether or not it's uh, watching the uh, cable infotainment channels, which I now just kind of read. I don't even bother watching them anymore. Or watching uh, candidates uh, whale away uh, at a country that you would think uh, is literally on fire and burning uh, to the ground. Uh, I, I do have to think that I and continue to think that I have to go back uh, to uh, that documentary movie from about 1970, Kelly's Hero. It'd be a documentary to me, but uh, just too much of the negative waves. Generally, not always. I'm going to say 80% of the time when you find something uh, that's a high, it's probably from euphoria, uh, not because everybody was looking at their shoes and uh, looking for some place to put their big toe because all they could do is look at the ground. So uh, just, I don't see a lot. I, I see a little, a little tinge that's not silver on that cloud, uh, but not enough to make me act. And I'd rather much uh, be responding to what happens over the weekend uh, than trying to bet on the outcome of two people and their motivations, which I do not know. I'm much better when it comes to uh, looking at what a million people will do than one. And I think that's kind of the idea. In fact, uh, Wyckoff, uh, James Wyckoff, called uh, the whole idea the composite man in the stock market. That was the wisdom of crowds, and that uh, generally they'd all go wacky at the same time, uh, and... Uh, they come back to their senses at the same time, but it was the it is the wisdom of crowds and the mad and the madness of crowds. Uh, but uh, I don't know. When we come back, we'll uh, look at uh, a little history and some I I met 1994ish I think 93ish 94ish 92ish can't remember now, but we'll bring it up in history. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. You can call me at 877-927-6648. Uh, in the den, we were talking a little bit about what's going on. And I uh, call it a Mexican standoff with uh, President Z, President Trump, and President Powell all standing in that dirty little circle uh, with the dust blowing from the good and the bad and the ugly. And the music was just firing up. Dun, 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 dun. What was the name of that song? Was it just the theme from The Good and the Bad and the Ugly? Yeah, everybody knows it, doesn't they? And I don't think that there's anybody that doesn't know it. Bum, 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 bum. It was a good song. Good. Well, I guess it's not a song. Instrumental, I guess it was. Uh, and uh, speaking of instrumental, all the propeller heads and Shirley Bassey are ready. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1972, an iconic video game company, Atari, is founded by Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney. Their first video game, Pong, was the first commercially successful video game and led to the start of uh, the video game industry. In 1977, Atari's video computer system, known as the VCS, and later the Atari 2600, popularized the home video game market. Uh, and, of course, uh, a lot of the culture... Uh, that we had probably through 2000 uh, in Silicon Valley was uh, pretty much pushed by no one, Bushnell. Uh, he was uh, very aware of how much money there was selling software uh, and that those little cartridges were like gold. And if he could just get a game out for Christmas, it was worth millions. So instead of telling everybody they had to stay, to 8 o'clock on Friday nights and 8 o'clock throughout the week to get a video game that was going to make about, well, I don't know, $100 million or something back then. Um, he basically told all the programmers, which were men at the time, uh, that if they stayed till 8 o'clock on Friday night, it would be well worth their time. Uh, that started a uh, uh, an ongoing thing of when, uh, oh, I don't know, 20 or 30 hookers and hot tubs would show up Friday night at 8 o'clock at the Atari uh, programming headquarters. Certainly uh, probably wouldn't go over today. 
uh, but uh, it showed the uh, amount of get it done now, do whatever it takes to get it done now, uh, and how much that paid off for Atari. Uh, and of course, uh, from then on, almost everybody knew that the idea of getting out there and getting first uh, was worth uh, a uh, 10 times the amount of money later on when you had competitors and other people in the business. Uh, Q fast forward to about 1993, four, five. Man, I'm going to have to start writing the stuff down because I'm forgetting it. Uh, I'm at a meeting. It's I think it's, uh, I know it's winter wintertime. Uh, and it's uh, in a hotel, uh, downtown Chicago. And there was a, a discussion of several uh, people that were invited to different companies uh, to see whether or not uh, we could put up a consortium to buy Commodore business machines uh, out from uh, you know, impending bankruptcy. Uh, that morning, I went into the meeting, and uh, it was probably 10 minutes into the meeting that was supposed to last a few hours, uh, I had already seen something on a, uh, uh, well, I, I kind of early for websites, but let's call it a bulletin board still back in those days, uh, that, uh, in fact, a couple of people had emailed me from Commodore that were programmers that I knew and told me that they were all let go the night before. So the first thing after about 10, 20 minutes, um, I said, uh, I just want to interrupt for a second, and that is, uh, since all the programmers were fired yesterday, is there anything actually left to buy if these guys scatter to the winds and we don't buy it literally today. Uh, Nolan, who I'd met for about five minutes before the, the phone, shock, shook his hand, introduced him to me, um, waited around about five minutes, walked out of the room while everybody else was talking, and I never saw him again. Uh, he did call me one more time about a month later uh, when I was following up, uh, and he told me one thing, and that is to go up to Westchester, Pennsylvania, and uh, go into the back lot of Commodore Business Machines and tell me what I'd seen. And uh, I did that. And uh, what I found was absolutely amazing. All those Commodore 64s uh, that had been returned from Macy's and Penny's and all the places that probably shouldn't be selling computers, all the returns were never fixed. They just shoved them into tractor trailers on the back lot and kept them uh, and showed them as a uh, a value on the books. I'd really never gone into what was fairly much outright fraud before. Uh, Irving Gould was the uh, CEO of the company and chairman, um, and he was a uh, wow. When when you talk snakes, uh, you uh, you really diss the snakes when you talk about this guy. Uh, and somehow he never went to jail. And it was when I, 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 I big realization uh, that there are two things, and that's the forward-looking face of the company and the reality of books that are either at least uh, somewhat toasted or completely fried and baked to a lump of coal. And of course, their books were bank, uh, 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 to a lump of coal. And we you know, tried to dry, buy it out of bankruptcy, but the lawyers got involved, by the way. If you've never been through a real bankruptcy, there is one, one huge, uh, overwhelming uh, idea for the lawyers involved, and that is to run it into the ground until the cash is gone. That is, there's no way they're going to fight everything, they're going to question everything, and they're going to bill uh, probably two or three times for every hour uh, that they go after until the money is gone and there's nothing left. And, of course, by that time, uh, time has moved on. The programmers, engineers, and everybody's gone. And there's nothing literally to buy. Uh, so at that point in bankruptcy and corporations, the attorneys are literally the worst enemies of the people that they're supposed to re, uh, represent. And that is the shareholders trying to get any kind of value out of it. And uh, since then, I'm trying to remember when someone went bankrupt where shareholders got anything other than pennies on their uh, – bankrupt stocks. And uh, you're almost always better just to go ahead and take the lumps uh, and sell your shares for 50 cents if the thing went belly up and you got trapped, uh, then wait around forever to get literally nothing. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, what else do we have going on? The good and the bad and the ugly. Okay, there's a YouTube version. 
That's it. Okay, other questions out here as we go to break. I want me to look at a couple of stocks, and we will do that when we come back. Make sure and give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, um, kind of a good day to give me a call. We'll answer. I've got three or four stocks here already in the queue. We'll get to those in the next segment. We'll look at some of the other ones out here. But, uh, again, cue the music, the good, the bad, and the only. The only? The good, the bad, and the ugly. Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, anyway. Uh, got a... Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, we've got a couple more emails that are interesting. We'll go through them one by one. Uh, first, Netflix, NF, LX. Breakout July 17 on earnings? I don't think so. Uh, costs have been going up as many other companies have been getting into this uh, 
space. And we can also say that the quality of the new shows has been going down because of that huge demand for talent in Hollywood. I don't think it's going better. And uh, from everything I hear, uh, I don't wouldn't be surprised that it's at 385.99 as it goes into earnings. Uh, at the same time, I probably wouldn't hold it through earnings. Uh, another question out here, LL, lumber liquidators or formaldehyde or us uh, continues to bounce around. Uh, still getting plywood from China. Um, I don't see anything in the chart. Um, you know, I think you're going to base around here for 10 bucks for a while. But I don't think that there's anything really new in that. Uh, to, to, to Rite Aid had some news this morning um, and popped higher uh, today. Uh, and that is they've got a deal with Amazon to pick up the packages there. The thought is if you go in to pick up the package, you're going to buy something uh, that's horribly overpriced from Rite Aid. Uh, RAD is the symbol on that. Uh, man, if you're not in this already, I think you've probably missed uh, the uh, – the entry, you know, I think you want to be, you know, if it pulled back to eight bucks on light volume, there may be something there. Uh, but uh, I think, I think, uh, yeah, getting into bed with Amazon is probably the beginning of the end uh, for these companies. They're better off hiding from them. Uh, and last, Whirlpool, which uh, I think uh, we talked about last year uh, as being one of the big plays. Uh, especially uh, on uh, tariff issues, if we get tariffs. I mean, that's it. Uh, you're not going to be getting all the uh, cheap Asian um, uh, steel in your washer and dryer and your refrigerator. And that means that Whirlpool actually still built here in the United States to some extent, or at least the model's still here. Uh, could do very well and why it's probably holding up as well as it did. I dislike the very light volume uh, off this 114 low. Uh, if we get bad news on Monday, uh, this could, uh, or like good news on Monday, this could actually go the other way, depending on what it is. But again, it's all about the deal, the art of the deal. And the question is what that deal is going to be. I do not know. Uh, and so um, I don't flip coins. Homie, don't flip coins. He waits until the ball's right over the center of the plate, puts it right over there as he points to the left field fence. Uh, okay, that's one of them. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Herman Miller. Uh, as I said uh, on Monday, I think. Yeah, was it was a Monday or Tuesday. Um, I looked at Herman Miller and some of these other uh, companies uh, that make furniture, uh, steel case, I think also came out with earnings, if I'm not mistaken, um, that you want to watch these. I didn't want to play them so much as uh, look at them as indicators, canaries in the coal mine, because guess what? Uh, if they're not hiring people, they're not buying new furniture for the office. Herman Miller, uh, a huge win today, a blowout through the top side, and certainly one of the better looking uh, uh, stocks out there. Uh, Steelcase is the other one. Uh, uh, SCS. Uh, and this could actually, these can actually tell you a great deal more uh, than what the uh, federal numbers are for employment uh, because they tell you that people are buying uh, office space. Yet another great movie. Man, I can't believe how many great people and actors were in that. But, uh, yeah. I, I'm going to have to watch that again. Still one of the best cult movies of all time. And, of course, uh, not not looked well when it came out. But, man, does it play almost every weekend on uh, deep cable. Yeah, it's one of the best movies of all time. Anyway, Steelcase back up again. Uh, and, of course, you gap down on this one. Uh, but it's still kind of in the trading range. But. You got a little bit of that, and it depends on when they close their books. But uh, you got kind of a tale of two cities in this uh, stuff where basically they do a lot of business. 
but I don't, I'm not exactly sure on Steelcase if it is an issue with them having manufacturing overseas, and maybe they were talking about that when their earnings came out. But Miller Herman, pretty much everything built in the United States, I believe. In fact, a lot in the Appalachian area in the, the furniture business for Miller Herman, if I'm not mistaken, but up 17%. Uh, and you got to say that it, that is good. Uh, I'm just trying to remember if there was anything else we wanted to follow up on. Uh, da, 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 okay. Uh, yep. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Go through a few of my emails. Okay, got all that. Got all my Amazon stuff. Uh, two, 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 two. We talked about that yesterday. Uh, that was the uh, company uh, that was using uh, blockchain uh, to actually show how many people had viewed and who had viewed uh, the uh, content. Kind of a YouTube uh, company, or going after YouTube company, LBRY for that listener. And yeah, let's see what else we have. Let's take a quick look uh, at Microsoft. Get Microsoft has done fairly well because it's almost totally insulated. Uh, nobody buys uh, Microsoft products in, for the most part, in uh, China. Uh, they steal them the old-fashioned way. They steal them. Uh, and, of course, uh, not a lot of respect for intellectual property. So uh, Microsoft, eh, you know, you had kind of a bad day with some volume, not much on the way, uh, but you still haven't really busted uh, the trend line. You had that uh, pullback uh, into the 1st of June, and then, of course, it's made it all back up. So a false break to the bottom and the highs. I don't know how much more Microsoft can do. They've done almost everything perfectly. Uh, we talked, I think, Monday or Tuesday about the new uh, folding display that's nine by nine folded and uh, 18 by 18 unfolded somewhere around there that's uh, that new Samsung foldable display. I'm not really thinking that there's that much in it. Um, but of course, uh, their business everywhere else continues to chug along. Can't imagine they're going to have a horrible breakdown in price, but eventually the market will pull back and they will pull back too. Okay, got another question. Uh, about Boeing, uh, open much lower. Uh, looked like a little bit of a bear raid pre-market. I think I saw 350 earlier in the day. Got down to 362.40 for the low today uh, in regular trading hours. But I think they savaged it pre-market. Uh, but uh, basically, still in this uh, 370 to 377 range that's been in for seven days. We'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Target First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Target First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com 
and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Alan Parsons is going to be a guest. Huh. You know, I don't think I've ever seen him interviewed or talked about. Uh, I, I can't even remember if I, if, he, if I saw him, what he would look like. All I know is the work that he's done. And, uh, of course, uh, the lead engineer on uh, Dark Side of the Moon and, of course, uh, his Alan Parsons projects, but one of the biggest producers. I think the first guy to actually... Um, have some talent and be a producer at the same time. Yeah, maybe another one. Who's the guy that killed that girl? Ex said he accidentally shot her. The wall of sound guy. That's the other guy I'm thinking about. Uh, anyway, a uh, question about Boeing out here. It's just been going sideways. I don't see much else happening uh, in this. And again, uh, they got orders out the yin yang. Uh, I think that the article uh, that came out on Boeing having yet a second problem that they supposedly were not able to solve. Probably not true. My guess is it took them all of one day to fix the problem in both of these. Uh, for people that are not familiar with the FAA and the way things work, it's not that you got a problem. It's that after you have a solution, you've got to prove that that's, that kind of works. And uh, you've got to use a lot of testing. And that's it. They may it only may take a day to figure out what you've done wrong and fix the issue. It takes a lot longer to fill out all that paperwork and go through test after test after test to prove the fix is in. And, uh, and I think a lot of people are just looking at this at 4 or 46 and orders out the yin-yang. That is a technical term, by the way. Uh, continues on. Um, I, you know, it, it finally did pull back, but man, you had to have an event that no one could have predicted to get it. Uh, but again, I'm not exactly sure why everybody hates this company so much. Um, maybe because they've been on the short side of it and lost so much money. But it seems like they make a product. People like the product. They had a product that had a problem. Uh, when Apple had that, that product and it started catching on fire and burning houses down, you heard almost nothing uh, like this. And uh, it always makes me think that uh, both in the press and uh, in the halls of, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Park Avenue, uh, where all everybody sits around and talks to everybody and has one opinion when you get done, and that's the only opinion anybody can have, that uh, something's wrong with it. Something's wrong if we make a good product in America. I don't know. Just makes me think they're just stuck too much in the negative waves. Not enough, too much, Moriarty. Just, just too much in the negative waves. Okay, um, another question about looking at uh, restoration hardware again. Uh, we brought it up. Um, yeah, I still think that, man, you want to, if you could get this up, a lot of short interest, if you get it up to about 135, that is one that may be the next leg down. Uh, we talked about Tesla as possible shorts if everything hits the fan. 
uh, and that is the uh, the uh, poo hits the fan. I like that word poo, but uh, I don't know. It all style sauce also for a bear, poo bear. I don't understand that either. Ugh. A little negative connotation there. Tesla, the same kind of thing that we see in uh, Boeing, and that is just a lot of going sideways out here. Uh, again, everybody pointing, uh, the Mexican standoff, everybody pointing guns at each other. Who's going to be the first to pull? There's a, some great game theory on that, by the way, if you ever look it up, on the Mexican standoff. Uh, and uh, the thought is to shoot um, the the person that's most likely uh, has the best shot as your first action. But uh, pretty deep stuff. Okay, uh, what else do we want to look at today that I wanted to talk about? Uh, more questions about steel. I don't see anything different than yesterday. Uh, we're just, again, in this trading range. In fact, you really want some action. No action tells you one of two things. You're in either distribution or accumulation. And generally, you want to wait uh, for that to break if you're not real sure in which side you're on for that. Uh, question to look at the SMHs is coming in. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, back into these gaps today. And again, since Micron uh, had fairly good numbers, uh, a lot of people on the wrong side and short uh, this sector. Uh, back up, you wanted something in the neighborhood of uh, uh, 18, 15 million shares. You got about 4 million shares now. But again, uh, this is all kind of a uh, flip of the coin come Monday. Uh, a, a good outcome probably puts the SMHs into 115 to 117. A, a bad outcome probably puts it to 102. So that's it. <laughs> Okay, everybody's everybody's uh, getting after me in my mixed metaphor and movie references that are uh, thick as thieves today. But uh, I, again, want to win the Mixed Metaphor Award and the Digression Award. And uh, thank you, uh, Ron, uh, for sending me uh, I've, a, a shirt that says, I, yet I've digressed again. Uh, I appreciate Thanks for sending that to me. Uh, to, to, to what else? Yeah, Phil Spector. That was the guy, the crazy guy uh, that killed the girl that was in Amazon Women for the Moon. I got one more movie reference today. My my digression award is probably uh, in like Flint. And another movie reference. Uh, work. Uh, a few more questions about uh, this stock. Again, I don't, you know, if you listen to, what was it, a, a week? And some odd days ago, um, when we talked about this, I guess it was last week, uh, coming out for the IPO, uh, I didn't think a lot of it because of the way that they had this structured. And again, everybody could sell all their shares. There's nothing holding anybody back uh, in the company uh, from selling their shares. And I really want to see how this trades over a longer time frame. I do like the product, but the product does not make money. And that's always an issue. What's going to happen? How is it going to happen? And what kind of uh, uh, competition is Microsoft going to be with Microsoft Teams when they patch it up to LinkedIn and all the other uh, suite of programs that they have for their ecosystem? Um, we looked at LinkedIn, who the guy said literally that there was no way he could compete uh, in the market. There was nothing he could do where he wouldn't be squashed by Facebook or uh, some of the other guys. And that's why he went to Microsoft to get bought uh, and become a part of Microsoft. You had to join a, or you had to pick a team uh, with these giant platforms like Facebook or the rest. Uh, Facebook didn't make a lot of sense. In retrospect, you don't hear a lot about LinkedIn anymore. But my guess is that when all of this stuff finally gels and they have it together, uh, you will see kind of a juggernaut like Facebook has for Microsoft. And we may even be seeing kind of the first green sprouts uh, or shoots of that happening already. The uh, question is, yeah, would Microsoft uh, kill work just like it did with Netscape? And the answer is a resounding yes, especially since 
they have a little bit, like I said, they've got an ecosystem to back up where uh, work doesn't, even if it's a good product. We'll be back in a minute. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And, uh, well, let's take a look in here and check on the volume and everything else going on for the market here. Let me close that and get to, where's that at? Come on. There you are. Uh, two, two. Okay. As we wrap up the show, we're up, uh, well, cost 13 points on the S&P cash, 29, 26. The Dow's up 32. The Nasdaq's up 57. The Russell's up uh, 20, almost 23. Uh, and of course, uh, what uh, tariffs probably good for the Russell? Probably bad for the other indexes, I would imagine, come Monday. Uh, don't really have a lot of people buying um, protection. VIX actually down on the day, uh, 2%. Uh, and, of course, uh, just not a lot happened. I think everybody's gone to their corners. The great uh, uh, Mexican standoff, and we're going to probably wait until that may have a little volatility if we get any news before the close tomorrow, but I don't know if you can spend a lot of time on it. When we look at the volume, pretty quiet today. We're just getting to 4 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape, so volume is very light. Uh, and I imagine it will continue light into tomorrow with 
uh, any lack of news. And again, you want to be uh, looking at all the setups now. A lot of people think, well, nothing's happening. This is when you should really start spending your time looking at all the way that these things are set up. So you don't have to do it in real time when things are flying, uh, dishes, all the other stuff flying, things being thrown, the wailing and gnashing of teeth, all the other things that can happen uh, going on. But it will be, I suspect, a volatile Monday. And uh, yeah, what can you say? React to the market, probably not predict this one. A lot of times I'd like to predict, but that's when I see a lot of signals. Right now, I don't see those. In the meantime, so when you can, not when you have to. And as always, I'll be here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.